what are the most common causes of low testosterone? And I believe we have a list of nine that we can go over. Welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. My name is Steven de Vos, and as a guest, we have back here, Brian Burke. Welcome, Brian. Steven, thanks again for having me. Great to see you. Uh, great to talk to you before we, we uh, start this official podcast and hear how you're doing over there. Well, uh, holding on. <laughs> so we have a question for you. So what are the most common causes of low testosterone? And I believe we have a list of nine that we can go over. Perfect. Perfect. Um, the first one is aging, obviously, uh, as we've discussed in the past, you know, based on the data um, and some of the studies done, they will say that the testosterone levels decline about 10% per decade. I've seen other studies that indicate it's between one to 3% a year. Um, I tend to think that it's probably somewhere in between the one to 3% a year based on what we see, because we see a lot of guys that will have, you know, this is just numeric values, right? But, um, you know, based on statistical averages, let's say that the average for a healthy male in his mid twenties is somewhere in the high 600s. You know, we're seeing more and more guys in their thirties and early forties in sort of the, the 300 range. Um, again, this is not all about numbers because all of the guys that we see have all of the symptoms that are associated with low testosterone as well. So I think that uh, age is one, which is probably the, the biggest factor over time. Um, there's just no way around it that as we age, our testosterone levels and our hormone levels are, are uh, in decline. Um, and that's probably for a number of reasons. But uh, I would say that's probably about the number one, uh, you know, cause that, that we see is just as guys are getting older, their testosterone levels are declining. And, um, you know, personally, I, I equate this sort of as I view my grandfather, um, you know, from 70 to let's say 80, I think that his hormone levels, he wasn't a weightlifter, but his hormone levels were probably declining at such a rapid pace that he was getting, he had a choice of either getting really, really thin and not gaining a lot of weight or gaining a lot of weight and becoming very heavy because he, he was no longer maintaining muscle mass. So as we get older and our testosterone levels continue to decline further and further, it becomes more and more difficult to maintain uh, lean mass, which is what's driving our metabolisms. And so, um, you know, that's where, and we see the exact reverse, right? So when we have guys that are older and we improve their testosterone levels and they go to the gym and they build muscle mass, they're really able to positively impact their, um, you know, their metabolism. And it's a great weight management or yeah, I guess a great weight management tool. So the more muscle mass you have, as you know, you have uh, great muscle mass. I try to maintain a lot as well. The higher your metabolism, the less likely you are to gain weight long term. So uh, I would say uh, age is a, is a really important one. Um, and then coupled in with age, there are going to be a lot of environmental factors. Uh, and, and environmental, I would say environmental slash lifestyle, right? So we could get into uh, food. Um, I know that we've talked about this in the past. And one of the questions were, hey, are, are items like soy, um, are uh, too little fat in the diet, uh, are BPAs um, impacting, you know, testosterone levels? And, and they are. Now, uh, and I know we talked a little bit about this prior uh, to hopping on the, the call is, uh, in, in our view, this is all, these are all items that impact uh, estrogen levels. And as we know, the body uh, reads the estrogen levels to either sort of start uh, testosterone production or stop testosterone production. So when your, your estrogen levels are on the high side, obviously your body thinks that you have really healthy levels of testosterone, so it's going to shut production down. So what happens when we eat food? that has estrogens in it or the BPAs, which, uh, you know, has a very similar composition to estrogen. Of course, your body thinks that your estrogen levels are higher. And as a result, it's going to start to, uh, you know, decrease uh, production of testosterone. So, uh, so I think that that's uh, one, you know, processed foods obviously are not going to help. 
Um, and I think also some of this, some of these items relative to food also make you less healthy. So it's sort of an indirect impact on testosterone, right? So if you're eating the wrong food and you're gaining uh, fat, so you have a higher body fat percentage, then you're going to aromatize uh, more testosterone into estrogen. And so it's almost like a cascade. A lot of this stuff uh, is sort of like a cascading downward spiral, right? So you, uh, you're eating foods that increase your estrogen levels, and you're also eating unhealthy food, which help you gain unhealthy weight. So your fat levels are going higher, which also uh, increases your estrogen levels, which decreases your testosterone, which gives you less energy to go to the gym, which makes you less likely to work out. And when you go to the gym, you don't see the results. So what's why go to the gym when you could stay home and eat ice cream, which will then, you know, add, you know, more uh, body fat, which, you know, continues that downward spi uh, spiral. So, you know, I think food is, a, uh, is obviously another one, uh, not only because we're eating too many calories, but we're eating the wrong things. And then, you know, those things can not only uh, have some estrogens in them, but also they can be adding fat on to us. So, uh, you know, that's another one. Um, relative to food, by the way, there are also some foods. So I think it cuts two ways. You can eat food which, uh, you know, increases your estrogen levels and lowers your testosterone, but you can also eat food that can help improve your testosterone levels, right? So um, you can look for foods. I know that uh, vitamin D, you know, if you, even if people Google this, they will see that if you uh, have some food sources that have vitamin D in it, um, you know, vitamin D is, is important in producing testosterone levels. Uh, it, it also improves a uh, free testosterone, right? Uh, beef, you know, eating meat, eating protein. Um, so there are some foods that you can eat, which also can help you to improve your uh, testosterone levels. So I think food is, it has, it's, it's a multi-directional, right? So you can eat a uh, food that will lower, or you can not eat that food and you can eat food that can potentially increase. So, uh, you know, diet's a big one. We always say, we always tell our clients that we can give them or help, to help them to improve their hormone levels, but I can't get them off of the couch, uh, and get them to the gym and I can't make their food for them, you know? So it's a combination of eating healthy, exercising, and, you know, uh, optimizing hormones or improving hormone levels that are three powerful things when they're added together. So uh, that's another one. Um, uh, as we touched on earlier, by the way, obesity, well, this, this is another big one and it's sort of related to the food, right? So obesity is another, I think, critical factor. Um, we find this even in young, uh, every once in a while, we'll get someone who's young that comes into the practice and, and at least we'll run their lab work for them to see where they're at and what happens with a lot of younger and older uh, obese males is that they obviously have uh, higher uh, body fat percentages and of course, they're aromatizing based on uh, 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 the, the fat content, they're aromatizing more testosterone to estrogen. And they also are in that downward spiral. And how do they dig themselves out? Um, for the younger guys, you know, I think it's really difficult because maybe they don't have a lot of life experience yet. And, um, you know, they're sort of starting and they're not in shape. And, and so how do you have the energy to go to the gym when you have low levels of testosterone and you're not seeing the results? And so, um, you know, that's a real difficult position to be in, I, I think, as well. So obesity is a major, uh, I think, a major factor, one of the biggest ones, in fact. Uh, I know that in America, we have 43.6% of the population, the adult population is obese. And I would say a big percentage of our clients come to us and they're obese. Uh, today, I actually met with a couple amazing, you know, sort of amazing uh, story. I met with a male who started with his at 28% body fat. And in nine months, you know, he, uh, we optimized the hormones. He started exercising a little bit more. He's down to uh, 13 percent, 13 and a half percent. So it's a really amazing, you know, accomplishment. He's working hard. And his wife uh, has gone from about 31% down to 19. 
and she's she had a shoulder injury, but it's amazing. Even with her, she's gained about 15, no, maybe it's nine, 10 pounds of muscle, and she's lost about 19 pounds of fat. So total transformation. He's lost 35 pounds of fat and he's gained about 20 pounds of muscle. So he actually looks, but he only, by the way, he only he only looks like he's lost. Uh, well, he's only lost 10 pounds, but he looks like he's lost about 50. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really dramatic. It's a dramatic swing. So, uh, so, uh, you know, obesity is another one. Um, I think alcohol, alcohol has uh, two, uh, you know, it's sort of a two prong alcohol in and of itself. If you're drinking ex- excessively can decrease, um, can decrease your testosterone levels, but in addition, it can impact your sleep. So, um, it has, uh, you know, sort of a two uh, prong attack. Um, that's another factor, by the way, we find that people that have sleeping issues, uh, that come to us in general, uh, you know, have uh, t- lower testosterone levels. And so it's a result of, you know, when you consider what, what is the, the, uh, body's goal, why, why are we sleeping? You know, we're obviously sleeping to restore, repair, to re-energize. And so when you're not sleeping well, how is your body going to repair itself? How are you going to restore your energy levels? And the majority of our hormone levels are boosted overnight. So when you wake up in the morning, your testosterone level is typically going to be the highest it is all day long. Your, um, your growth hormone level or IGF one level is typically the highest that it's going to be all day long in the morning. And so how do you, uh, how do you replenish, you know, yourself and, and restore your health if you're not sleeping well? So that's another big one. Um, you know, we have stress, uh, and that again would go along with sleep, right? So if you're stressed out, we're all stressed out right now during the, you know, during these times. And so of course, stress, um, there's, there's obviously a a physiological response as well. Uh, when you have higher levels of cortisol, of course, but stress in and of itself is going to, uh, impact your hormone levels because if you're stressed out, you're probably, you know, not uh, sleeping as well as you should. Uh, many times people will eat less healthy when they're stressed out, uh, to try to uh, to lower the cortisol levels. And then cortisol is catabolic, um, in its nature. And so if, if you're burning muscle, you're going to be slowing your metabolism. So, uh, but again, I, you know, I think we talked about this. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's all sort of a whole, all of these things seem separate, but they're all related. Um, of course, you know, you have some medical conditions, uh, you know, uh, you have guys that have some t- t- uh, testicular damage, um, their body just may not produce testosterone. We see this, uh, we don't see it that often, but we do see it. We've seen it recently in, in a couple of young guys that come to us, their levels of, uh, FSH and LH follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone will be very high. So their body is trying to produce, uh, more testosterone, uh, but the testes just aren't able to produce more. We typically tend to find that in our older uh, population. The, uh, we've had many older uh, guys that have come uh, in with that exact situation. They'll have high levels of FSH, high level uh, in LH, but their testosterone level is low. So it's, it's almost interesting from a scientific perspective to see because you know that the body is trying to make a hormone that it wants and it needs and it's just not able to. So, uh, so we have that, um, you know, obviously liver disease and kidney disease and diabetes and obesity. Some of these other chronic illnesses are also going to negatively impact, uh, testosterone levels. So, uh, I don't, were there, there were, were there any more? Um, Oh, the other one, which was a funny one that we talked about, not funny. Uh, maybe it's ironic. So frequency of sex, so this is another one that actually can have a negative impact on testosterone levels if you're not having sex, right? So, but then that again starts this cascading downward spiral. So if you're not having sex and you end up with lower levels of testosterone, that can further reduce your libido, which makes it less likely for you to want to have sex if you have less libido, which can further reduce your testosterone. So, uh, you know, I guess... 
if uh, you know one positive fun way that we could say to boost testosterone is uh, for for guys and and females to have more uh, have more sexual intercourse uh, because it has positive health uh, uh, benefits mm-hmm. and testosterone certainly if you can raise your testosterone levels by having uh, you know more sexual intercourse um, which is enjoyable then you should do it and then you'll be more likely to have more sex because your libido will increase. So it will be a positive cycle, mm. which will help you get in more in better shape. You know, that's what we find. We find a lot of times when we get our clients and their hormone levels are turned around, they, uh, they're in a positive uh, cycle, a positive cycle upward. So they have more energy, which makes them more likely go to the gym, which means, means many times they're more focused on their diet. And of course, if you look good and you feel good, you may want to have uh, more sex as well, right? So, uh, all all positive things uh, when it comes to that. Um, so, but uh, so that's another good one. Um, medical conditions was the last one. Medical conditions. Uh, uh, we, treatments, medical treatments like uh, chemotherapy, radiation, uh, and so on. In in terms of our practice, we haven't run into, uh, fortunately. Uh, for us, you know, we're dealing more with healthy uh, clients um, and we, we haven't run into any that have sort of medical therapies or medical treatments that are impacting their testosterone levels. Uh, but I know that there are, you know, many different types of drugs that can negatively impact your testosterone levels. And so, uh, you know, we always tell our, our clients, you know, uh, when, when they fill out their online medical profile to put any type of medication that they're taking so that we can take a look at that and see if that in and of itself is having a negative impact. Uh, I know that there are some antidepressants that can, uh, uh, you know, uh, have a negative impact on testosterone, which again, uh, I remember as a, as a young male at 23, I went to a doctor and I told them that I was dragging lethargic and they wanted to put me on uh, Zoloft. I think that it was. And I was the one time that I actually read the uh, you know, they give these big pamphlets out and I read it. And one of the first things that came up as a, as a say a negative side effect was a reduction in libido. Mm. And I just started thinking as a 23, I, I, I had taken only one pill so far. And I thought as a 23 year old male, I just needed to get a positive attitude because if, if I was going to start taking a pill that might reduce my libido, you know, uh, how is that going to make me feel less depressed? Mm. And, um, you know, so I think that those types of, of antidepressants can have a negative impact on testosterone and libido. So, um, and, and, and I think in many cases, guys may have been misdiagnosed as having depression or they might be depressed and so that they're given an antidepressant but in fact they may be low t and i think that that's confirmed based on a lot of conversations that we have with our clients because uh you know that's a sort of common theme that that we run into which is you know low energy slash uh, uh depression yeah okay. well thank you brian that was an awesome list thank you my pleasure And now give this video a thumbs up and go watch one of these videos to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization.